We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Yeah, this is Everton Blender. And it's all about the young police from Jamaica. Seeing young police channel. Big up yourself. Everton Blender said that. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Blessed love, Rastafari. Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. On the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video yes so you know today um in jamaica um a young man was killed yeah, man uh, you're looking at him right now yes um he was killed right right in front of his um the children them in manchester and christiana at the moravian primary school but what most people do not understand this is what happened when people lose faith in the justice system brother that? that is what is going to happen people have seen what is happening in jamaica and people you know the people is not going to take it anymore so that is this is what is going to happen so the murder rate is will increase in jamaica you know? yes so the tragic that have cuthbert jerome lambert i highlights the urgent need for reform government need to start on murderers in a normal settings you you would think that um moving forward things would more get better but instead of it's getting better it's just getting worse in jamaica why because we have a set of corrupt people who claim that they are politicians in which they are nothing but misleaders these are people they don't they don't love the same poor people because if they do love the poor people they would make sure that everything is there to protect them and provide them with all of the uh, all of the thing that that system called government supposed to provide no, no the system that we have in jamaica is beneficial to criminals so that's why this young man had lost his life. If it was in the scheme of business, um, he would not be on bail for murder. He would be still in jail until his case is, is, um, is tried. He's either is acquitted or is convicted. And then the community can move on. But when you kill someone's family and then you are out on bail, and, as if, and you know that the chance of him being convicted is slim to none. Yeah, well, you think people is going to take it. People not take it anymore. So in a disturbing testament to the feel of our justice system in Jamaica, the brutal killing of 27-year-old Cuthbert, Cuthbert Jerome Lambert outside the Christiana Moravian Primary School in Manchester this past Friday morning serve as a stark reminder of the consequences when justice is inadequately served, the tragedy unfolded just moments before school day was set to begin leaving a community shaken and fearful for their children's safety Cuthbert Lambert who was known to his family and friends as Jerome has been out on bail while awaiting trial for a 2018 murder involving a child the circumstances of his death which occur as he walked to his black Toyota wish after dropping off his five-year-old stepdaughter raised troubling questions about whether his killing was a direct, direct consequences of the previous case. You can be so many facets to his killing but you know most people have put it there that, that's it because I'm a boss in my walk. The chilling details are, are as follows. Lambert was ambushed and shot at the school gate. And despite immediate response from emergency services, he was pronounced dead on the scene. So they make certain say, boy, then send him straight to the departure lounge, as he has done with his victim. 
So that, uh, that is going to happen in Jamaica, kill for kill. People have not faith in the justice system, you realize that uh, money run things. And no longer that criminals are get 10 years, 10 years in a pr prison for murder. So you as a witness, in that 10 years, they can't come back and kill you. So what's the sense? So it's a, you know, it'll be kill for kill. You kill my family, me kill you back, and it just continue. So the cycle of killing now will stop until I just don't the, the dummies them leave. I just saw it go. So this incident has ignited a wave of concern among parents who gather at the school gate to ensure their children were unarmed. The Christiana police, though, have confirmed Lambert's identity and are investigating potential links between his murder and his prior charges. So you know, say this is a man, a regular man for jail, because um, the police are talking about other charges. So I don't know, so you know, say it's a real gun boy this. You understand, our country. How oh, all them, oh, them normalize all them things, you know, where everybody wants to be bad man. What is so glamorous about it? What is so... What, what, what kind of lore is there, man? Adding to the community's distress, this tragic event comes on the heels of a series, a series of violent incidents in Christiana. Just two nights ago, earlier, 29-year-old Romario White was gunned down at a local bar and the week began with the heart-wrenching death of 10-year-old Tevan San Sanchez from Christiana Lee's primary. These events have plunged the town into a state of fear and trauma, disrupting, disrupting the once peaceful environment of North East Manchester. In response to escalating violence, Valentin Wint, the, peop the People's National Party criminal organization caretaker for North East Manchester, has expressed his deep concern. Wint attributes the recent crime to unknown perpetrators, further compounding the community's anxiety. He emphasizes the need for more effective justice system that can address these issues before they escalate into such devastating violence. Uh, this is a man uh, dummy or something. In the understand says the PMP criminal organization, along with the Jamaica Labour Party, after the after Siaga demits the political arena, let them get rid of all of the laws that were there. Murder used to be murder. A man charged with murder, you never get bail until the case is disposed of by the court. It's the same PMP criminal organization, along with the media houses, the, by, in a night, them pass all of them law make people charged with all eight counts of murder get bail. So what expect? We don't expect the people to take it no more when we don't feel the people. We don't have some mad people, believe you me. We don't support violence, but this is what it's going to boil down to. It's going to be a lawless society. And all of us, we don't feel it. One of these days, one of these politicians on them are drive by themselves or with them bodyguards or what. Bullets, bullets going to travel and hit one of them. Yes, man, that's when they all wake up. And guess what? They're not going to live to tell the tales. Straight to the departure lounge, and we have zero sympathy for them. Because they are the ones that help to contribute to this culture of violence. So the message is clear. When the justice system fails to hold individuals accountable and provide safety, the ripple effect are felt throughout the community. As we witness these tragedies unfold, it becomes increasingly evident that systemic reform is crucial to prevent such devastating outcomes and restore peace to our neighbourhoods. So why Jamaica hold the disturbing title as the murder capital of the world? Jamaica is renowned for its vibrant culture and breathtaking landscapes is now grappling with a grim reality. It is the murder capital of the world. This alarming distinction is not merely a statistic but a reflection of deeper systemic issues that have plunged the island nation for years. Understanding why Jamaica has earned this dubious requires dubious title requires an exploration of the multifaceted factors contributing to its high murder rates and the urgent reform needed to address this crisis. In a Jamaica, it's a glorification of violence. Yes, everything. Kill, kill, kill. Man for dead, shoot out man, head lick out man, marrow lick out man, I and shoot out the shoot off the boy, head turn him head in a like a punch a ball. So everything out of him head gone and the boy head fly gone and him marrow and you can't see. He head turn like a ball. You punch a ball. 
So all the cultural reverence fuel Jamaica's murder crisis. In Jamaica, the persistence, the persistence of high murder rates is not solely attributable, attributable to social economic disparities, but it is deeply intertwined with cultural glorification and violence. So Jamaica is a place where we glor them glorify violence. So you grew up in our country, in our culture, where you must be a killer. And if you're not a killer, you're not a body. So our parents enough to do with that. So while economic factors undoubtedly play a role, so them I tell about say I show people poor, lie. Are, all of them think they are lies. You know, have nothing to do with poverty. Just man just want to kill people and boast how him kill people. And because he knows him I get away with it, so him boast how much dopey he make. But when for them time for become dopey, them now want to dead. Them, them deed up themselves. We are telling that. Yeah, so that's why we love the departure of the killers them. You understand? So then we tell us, uh, oh, yeah, you know, sir, you know, I just fight them, I fight the youth them because through them poor. It now have nothing to do with poverty, but have to do with a culture of glorification and violence. So when while economic factors undoubtedly play a role, a more insidious issue is celebrating and normalized individual involving criminal activities. This phenomenon exacerbate the cycle of violence and perpetuate a dangerous environment where killings are not only frequent but also disturbingly celebrated. So the rule of um, glorification. So them set people where kill people, you know, you're big in a Jamaica. You know. But we're not talking about police, you know, we're talking about murder. A critical factor driving Jamaica's murder crisis is the public veneration of individuals with violent history. For instance, yeah man, we are telling about Beanie Man, Moses B. Davis, also known as Beanie Man, is a prominent figure who has been alleged to have connection to the killing of Gerald Le Borg Levy, a celebrated icon in Jamaican culture. The fact that such individuals are celebrated with national awards and public acclaim sends a troubling message. Instead of facing condemnation and accountability, those involved in violence are often elevated to celebrity status which can encourage others to emulate this, their actions. So I tell you, so I saw it go on. So when you see it, all right, yeah, why you tell me I didn't grow up near Orius Diner Brown. Never got to jail. He used to play for y'all on it, yeah, the migrate, live right here in Florida, and I mean, I'm good work. And them man, they're not involved. Them man, I come from them man, they're not involved in the drugs. Them man, they're not involved in nothing illegal. I him them for give him a national award. Them not give him. Because oh, him not, Diner never kill nobody. No. Dyna contribute to the culture, of sports, and the community of Jonestown, where we come from. You understand? He never got a jail yet. So the celebration of individual with past, with violent past, contribute to a culture where violence is normalized and even revered. When high profile figures allegedly involved in criminal activities are lauded, celebrated and revered, it creates a distorted perception, perception of success and power. This normalization can make violence seem like an acceptable or even desirable means of achieving status and influence, particularly among vulnerable youth who may see no other path to recognition or respect. And that I think in the ghetto, all people want a, rec a respect, yeah. Oh boy, if you respect me, you know, it's me kill him, you know. All them things there. So this cultural dynamic has profound implications for Jamaican communities. The reverence of violent figures can lead to dangerous environment where criminal behavior is not only tolerated but admired. So that is in my community. Everybody want to be a general Starkey. Yeah, man, a killer. You know, much labor rights Starkey kill. All police, you know, the man in a, the man in a paper soldier, you know. Never serving in a, in a army yet. Every killing where him kill, I lead a murder him commit. So this can discourage efforts to address violence and crime as the very individuals who should be held accountable are instead celebrated. So in time we see the Prime Minister or got Beanie Man and Bounty Killer, especially Beanie Man, yeah, and I say boy for um, national award. What kind of message that, that we say? So tell us we are liberal when we speak up. We are tell you, because I, I just saw it go. So this the cycle of violence becomes self-perpetuating with each new act of violence reinforcing the status and influence of those involved. 
So some people that say, boy, is that time for change, you know? I call for change. Addressing the issue of violence in Jamaica requires a more than just economic system reforms. It's also necessitates a cultural shift. So we need to change from this culture of normalizing, revering, celebrating people who are killed people like Beanie Man. What do you mean? You understand? It's a crucial, it is crucial to challenge the glorification of violence and criminal figures and to promote positive role models who embody non-violence and integrity. The Prime Minister Andrew Wallace him know of being a man killing Bogle and him out there because of vote a game national award. Shameless people. So we're not leaders in Jamaica, misleaders. Edward Thiago would never do that. That's why we tell you say this a brother and one dangerous brother, you know. Yeah, and the reason why we say that is the same thing we we'll see when him do the rasta them down by coral gardens. Disgraceful man and men baby and pretzel. You understand? Jamaica need with Jamaica is Jamaica need a leader and we can't we can't ask the other side for it because them are the one pro, um, promote this criminality and, and normalize it. We need a pro positive change to break the cycle of violence. There must be a concerted effort to educate and advocate, raise awareness about negative impact of glorifying violent individual and promote positive alternatives. They may have to do that in Jamaica because anything positive they may have nothing to do with it. Even a video with all even a video that educates people, most people don't watch it. They more have to see about what's going on in a people's life who and and celebrity. They don't want nothing we can change help change them life. Anything positive they don't want that. But eventually, the next generation in the we got my um if a Jamaica is left, like how 80, 80, 80 gone, you understand? So we don't know, maybe entire we go down to the ashes, somebody will try to rebuild it from the scratch. If it can rebuild, or maybe them tiny the Chinese them control Jamaica and you know say Chinese them for them act for them action when they come on for dealing with the people. Swift, harsh. Eventually maybe Jamaica might become a Chinese outpost. You understand? Cause we so licky licky hear them thing. They, they might all sign a document that you realize I said they must say Jamaica become a Chinese outpost. Because them licky licky bad in a way, I tell you. What I mean? All the politicians them. You understand? So encourage accountability. All individuals involved in violent acts accountably and ensure justice. Three, we must support community initiative. Invest in programs that provide you with constructive opportunities and alternatives to criminal activities. So you have to use people who come from the ghetto to promote them and say, yeah, this is the life where you want to live. But hey, that is the people that want to gravitate to. But that's how we tell the mothers and fathers them in our ghetto, especially where we come from, Jonestown, Concrete Jungle. Read, read, read. Teach the youth them from them a baby for read. Keep them away from the corals and the coral bunkers them. Yeah, make your, make your son them, make them stay on and them brief. So they may go outside and go mix up with the old corals in them. Because by mixing up with them, yeah, yeah, them brain will get messed up. So you want them to read. Those of you who want a Marcus to have a book, in a Jonestown and Concrete Jungle, contact me and we send it to you. If you make your son and your daughter read, I read it in a tenement yard. And when that finishes, I'll send another one. Because the only thing, the best thing that you can get any human being is books. Our books, that's the best thing you can get them. Yes. So refrain from cultural narrative. Shift the focus on celebrating violent figures to honoring those who contribute positively to society. So instead of looking up to man like George Pang, General Starkey, yeah, look up to men like me, yeah, a man who's from from right there in the in the ghetto and rose through various, rose through the rank in the police force, become a detective, and then leave the police force because of corruption. See the, the criminal. In the same police force in Jamaica, you see, uh, you know, witness seeing criminals being promoted while good police officers are kept down and realize that the corruption in the, in the, in the society sweeping the police force and I see them people them inside it. And the more crime them commit, the more promotion them get. We see it with a police union and cowboy and Donovan Ox O'Connor. But we were able to slow down Ox by writing a letter and sending it to the, the Public Services Commission. Yeah, because um, we had seen him in the company of Danai Williams, George ja ja Flash and Tony Brown. And Tony Brown and George Flash seem as if they have illegal guns on them. Yeah, man, I see him there, him right, right way up in a diary, say, him come look for you in a city. I see him there, we write in the same diary, say, at the time when him saying, I look for a lie, Mattel. 
he was at the Royal, the, the, the Royal Caribbean Bank in a New Kingston. Yeah, man, I'm and juke him so he never get no black hat. Yeah, man, we make him retire as inspector. So that's why we are telling us the police, yeah, man, right, right, that's why, right, 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 read, 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 youths, you understand? So we have weakness in our justice system. We know, so we have whole heap um, brown people back judges in our system, yeah. Chief Justice Brian Legosax are the main one. He might the one to introduce the brown people back. Remember, you know, um, Tessa Miller, and other cases, Tessa Miller, you know, them walk from, walk from the case. Yeah, walk from um, him, him, for, him case when they convict him. No, ex them not him right after why them do it. They just say, eh, no, we don't believe what happened and them thing. I'll let him go. And then him come to America and leave clans them <laughs> and him over to the authority say, boy, him can't live in a house with no man in every day. I get up and I see a man in a house with him woman. So they just call police for him and you understand. That's how he ended up back in Jamaica. Corros down, corro bunkers. So a critical factor contributing to Jamaica's status as the Murder capital is a systemic failure of its justice system. Inefficiency in law enforcement and the judiciary, coupled with widespread corruption, erode public trust and undermines efforts to combat crime. You cannot trust a system where you know you're corrupt. The judge, the, from the chief justice got all the way down. And you see the judges them not shame anymore. Them all are, them all have lobby. Um, you know, to criminal, to the criminals um, wing out there. And we see it in a vibes cartel case. You, know, all the, you understand? All them put themselves out there for sure. Say, look here, we're up to the task. Um, promise made, promise kept. And them call it them 500,000 US. Corrals in them, corrupt people them. You understand? So many crimes go unsolved. And perpetrators frequently evade justice, which only encourage criminals and perpetrators a sense of impunity. This systemic dysfunction hampers effective crime prevention and resolution, allowing violence to prof proliferate unchecked. Then we have gang violence. Gangs have a significant influence on Jamaica's crime landscape. These organized groups are often fueled by drug trafficking and other illegal activities and them wield a considerable power and control over communities. They engage in turf wars, extortion and violent retribution, contributing significantly to the murder rate. The pervasive presence of gang and their entrenched in influence in various communities complicate efforts to restore order and safety. Four, we can't forget political corruption that is rampant in Jamaica. Yeah. Political corruption further exacerbates Jamaica's violent crisis. Corruption within political and law enforcement institutions often lead to a lack of accountability and an inadequate resource allocation. This corruption undermines the effectiveness of crime fighting initiatives. It perpetuates a system where those in power are more interested in personal gain than in addressing the population's needs. So we tell you already, you know, say, one is just only a little bit better than the other. So it makes sense we keep going over it. What does that tell you? One is just a little bit better than the other. As a result, the systemic issue fueling violence remain unaddressed. So then now we have cultural norms and violence. Jamaica now, them norm, yeah, yeah, in the 70s, you know. When I don't want to believe it, Michael Manley, I'm going normalize violence. Yeah, Bory Boy and fed them up. You understand what I'm saying? Cultural attitudes toward violence also play a role in perpetuating high murder rates. In some communities, there's a normalization of violent behavior, which can influence individuals, particularly young people, to view violence as a legitimate means of resolving conflicts. One of the things we have killed Jamaican people, and whether or not you want to believe it, education is paramount. Education is the thing that helps most of us um, to think rational because we would be just like them. As you have any form of disagreement with someone, you start planning how to kill them. Because I, I, I just a culture, but when you can read and decipher things and, and you understand, you think totally different. So education is paramount. You, you know, you, some of the things I say, uh, you know, say, I don't have to just lock them off, I don't have to deal with them. Man. You understand what I'm saying? I don't think about them anymore. It's just, apart from thinking about, say, you want to kill them. 
And that's one I think that is killing our people in Jamaica because of lack of education. You understand? And that's why people um, them take out them them feelings <laughs> instead of you know them massage their own feelings and help themselves in such a way that them don't think negatively and feel like all is lost. You don't do it that way, you know, you understand? So that's one I think we can use to you know, resolve conflict. So this cultural acceptance of violence entrenches criminal behavior and makes it more challenging to shift societal attitudes toward non-violence. So when I come up with all of these things, you know, this is something, you know, it spread through the music too, you know. That's why we burn fire upon the violence in you know, the music. That's why we are tell uh, we are telling the people the other leaders them in the other Caribbean island them. The only thing the artists them in the country we perform murder music. No, we tired of it. The murder, no, art, no. That's not art. That happened that, that's not art. So limited resources often hinders effort to combat violence. Law enforcement agencies frequently struggle with inadequate funding. Insufficient training and a lack of modern technology to tackle crime effectively. The scarcity of resource impacts their ability to conduct thorough investigations, engage in proactive crime prevention and support victims of violence. So some people that say boy there's an urgent call for re re reform. Addressing Jamaica's position as murder, the murder capital of the world requires a comprehensive and multifaceted approach. It is imperative to tackle social economic inequalities by creating more opportunity for education and employment. Strengthening the justice system to ensure fair and effective law, law enforcement and commit, combating political corruption to restore integrity and accountability. Additionally, initiatives to address gang influence Shift cultural norms and increase resources of crime prevention are crucial for breaking the cycle of violence. Jamaica's high murder rate is not an insurmountable problem, but it demands immediate and sustained actions. We never follow why people have solve our problem. You know. We have seen a concerted effort by both political parties. One of them is a criminal organization who will never ever do anything about crime. Because that's the only thing with them do. Them create and breed criminals like Chink, the PMP criminal organization. And tell me, say, tell me, say, I wrap me wrong. By confronting these underlying issues head on and implementing meaningful reforms, Jamaica can work towards reclaiming its reputation and ensuring a safer and more secure future for its citizens. That's easier said than done. That, you know, so everything we have there, if we get context and with it, you can't just, just, you understand? We can't just give it just from one side. We have to give it from all sides. So it's a recipe for a continued viol violence. How evasion of justice fuel Jamaica killings crisis. In an island where evading imprisonment for murder seem almost routine. The perpetration of violence become not just a possibility, but a predictable outcome. The systemic flaws that allows individuals to escape the consequences of their actions create a dangerous environment where killings continue unabated. This cycle of impunity is a significant factor in Jamaica's struggle with high murder rates and addressing it is crucial to breaking the pattern of violence. Right now we are going through the cycle of impunity. <laughs> when individuals commit violent crime and face little, to no risk of significant punishment, it sends a troubling message that violence can be a viable option with minimal repercussions. This perception of impunity emboldens criminals, making them more likely to resort to violence as a means of settling disputes or achieving their goals. The thing is that in Jamaica, in time police kill you and you're a murderer, people hear say a hero. I don't know how that's a hero when you kill a kill. When you violate other people's human rights. You know how much people him did kill? As if it's something good. So him now when him I hear that them feel like say, oh some of them, boy I me mean, can't wait to kill people become the most wanted man. You know what they wanted? Them stress car them they understand. Them don't want to go to jail 
and them know say them are dead. And that's our lifestyle. I don't know what's so fascinating about this life. Where you live and you don't know if you're gonna face it tomorrow. Not that saying that you know being a law abiding citizen is the same is not the same thing. You understand? It's totally different. You're under less stress. The ease of which one can avoid prison for murder in Jamaica only access exacerbates this dangerous trend creating a cycle where violence begets more violence. So we're not going to stop have this, the killing and more killing because the system feel the people and it keep feel and continue to feel. Yeah, and we're not a leader of Jamaica, we're not going to be in the bus, we're not having a prime minister means he's a leader. He's a leader for your party, not the country, he's not a lead. He's supposed to have brought the boy in the neck. The ability of individuals to evade justice is rooted in systemic failure within the justice system. Inefficiency in law enforcement, inadequate resources and corruption undermine the effectiveness of crime prevention and prosecution. Many murder cases go unsolved and even when the suspects are apprehended, weak evidence and unreliable witness testimonies often results in acquittals or lenient sentences. We see man, a one man charged with a double murder, robbery, Execute the two people them in them head. Execute them in them. Let me lay down and shoot them in the back of them head. And a ten year him get for each murder. After ten year him, him can't get parole. After, after ten not parole, after ten year him can't come out of prison. So is he, if he's not dead in a prison and come out and somebody kill him, then no justice no exists. So that's the reason why people know, uh, no sir, me can't afford to make a man kill my family I and mean, go to prison for ten years and come out. Then for come kill me, no. So that's that's why you have a murder like this. And many more too. You understand? So these systemic weakness fail to deter to potential offenders and perpetuate a sense of lawlessness. And Jamaica is is a, is is on way, a en route to become a lawless society. I hate the way I look for you know, in the future. So the impact of community safety, the pervasive sense that justice is elusive, contributes to the community fear and insecurity. When individuals believe that their safety is at risk and that justice will not be served, they may be less likely to cooperate with law enforcement or report crimes. And that's what happened in Jamaica. People say things, oh, 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 oh me, if I don't know my business, me rather for tell the family, say, boy, I had time do it, I make them deal with time. Me now get myself involved, got a quote for one of my sister and my brother. So I saw it go down, every man for himself. And I saw it go, if you notice in the most murder cases, the person who was a witness, is related to the deceased. And I like back in the days where people do them civic duty because them use the music like the Buju Bantans and the others who say informer for dead. In informers are, are witnesses to murder and other um, serious crimes. And them normalize it and witness, uh, witness informer not a bad thing in a Jamaica. Murder are a good thing. You understand? So this reluctance f further hampers efforts to address violence and protect victims. Communities become trapped in a cycle of fear and retaliation, with each violent act breeding more violence. The need for reform to break this cycle and address the root causes of Jamaica's violence crisis, comprehensive reforms are essential. Strengthening the justice system to ensure that perpetrators of violent crimes are held accountable is a crucial first step. This involves increasing funding for law enforcement, improving forensic capabilities, and ensuring that the legal process is fair and efficient. Additionally, combating corruption within the system is vital to restoring public trust and ensuring that justice is served impartially. Effort must also focus on community engagement and building stronger relationships between law enforcement and residents to encourage cooperation and support for crime prevention initiatives. So there's a part forward. Start broke the boy of them neck. Yeah, just so it go. Five years on him neck broke. Addressing impunity is a role of perpetuating violence. Requires concerted effort from all sectors of society. Government, law enforcement, community leaders and citizens must work together to create a safer environment where justice is sought and achieved. By tackling the systemic issues that allow individuals to evade punishment, Jamaica can begin to break the cycle of violence and move towards a future where safety and security are a reality for all residents. 
But when a man say up on the TV you now, eh, the government, uh, allow man for a fire up gun and no raid and all of them things, eh, people start losing lose faith in our system. And that's why this youth are dead. You kill, expect to be killed. I just saw it go. It's as simple as that. People now not faith in our justice system no more because the justice system, um, justice have been elusive, especially for murderers in Jamaica. And uh, people are going to take line on it, the line on them own and because the system has failed them. Have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.